Don't drink soda. Um, I think we got all the lights on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Check all the way up. I'm gonna get this cup out of here. People don't know what that is. Yeah, they don't want to see a cup. This is cup head. Let's be professional here. Um, so I think we're uh, I think we're ready to start this thing up. What do you think? It feels good. Give it a give it an old fashioned countdown. Uh, we'll start from four on account of the four pillars of the Natural Habitat podcast. Four. Friendship, science, revenge, and intellectual property. So on four, three. Yo, welcome to the Natural Habitat podcast, everybody. My name's Mikey Booyah. My name's Awesome Ty, and this is Computer. Say hello, Computer. Bullshit. He's been snubbing you a lot. He also has been freaking out about this flood warning. It's, it's a storm of the century today. We, I know we said that before, but now I think, Ty, you kind of had some negative things to say about this storm. Oh, this storm's fucking causing me all sorts of inconvenience. Well, I'm talking about a week ago when they said it was going to hit the pineapple. The pineapple bomb cyclone. Pineapple bomb cyclone. You said, fuck this storm. You spat in its face. Yeah, it was, you know, like. It was not the storm that we're getting today. I feel like this is the bomb cyclone, and the the previous one was just like a like premature. It was um like a pre jack, yeah, like pre cum, yeah, pre cum of the storm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. So this storm is now crazy. The power is out at your house. The power is out at my house. The roads are flooded. I could barely get here. My doors are sealed at my house. My back door does not open or close anymore. It's just a wall now because it has been swollen shut by the rain. Rain got into spots where it's not supposed to get. And now I have no back door anymore. That sounds like a real fire hazard. Hopefully the front door still works when we try to leave here. But um, we'll see how that goes. I know that... Um, This has been a a trying time for everybody in California. We're not used to the rain here. Nobody knows how to act. It's it's very, you know, it's very alarming. I don't even have an umbrella, you know. So I don't know what I'm going to do, let alone. You might get wet, dude. I might. You might get some rain on your shirt and your your I also don't really have any rain-friendly clothes. Like all of my clothes in jackets and outer layers are all cotton. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be able to go outside? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna just run. Are you just gonna shut yourself in for the next? Are you gonna wait this storm out no, for four no, no, days? No, no, no. I'm gonna run. You're just gonna. Okay. I'm just gonna run from cover to cover, from shelter to shelter. So you'll be slightly outside. less exposed to the rain. Yeah. Because you're you're moving faster. Exactly. Because I can't in the rain. Can my window. It's copywritten. Well, I don't think I was close enough. True. <laughs> to trigger any sort of like automated thing. Um, so thank you for joining us this week. Thank you for hopefully you guys are safe. You're harbored in from the rain. Is that a term? Harbored in? No, I don't think. That, I, I don't mean, think it so. Is now. You're but hunkered you, you down. It, yeah. Harbored um, in. Um, batten down the hatches. Batten them. Batten them down. It's which, not button down the hatches. It's nah. batten down the hatches. Yeah. You do want to button down your britches. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Batten down your hatches. And hunker down, uh, harbor down, harbor freight. You know, these are all things that you're going to want to do. We were going to do an episode about storm survival, what you want to do in case of a flood, what you want to do if your child gets ripped away by the current. You know, you want to make sure that you have plans in place. But by the time this comes out, I feel like it's... Yeah, also, we don't have those answers. We don't know what to do. Like, yeah. you, you see us, we're fending for our lives here. We, we, we can't really provide you with any sort of insight as to how to beat the storm when we're, you know, being mollywopped by this thing right now. Mm-hmm. And also, um, I was looking at the radar this morning and I was watching this giant fucking blob come in. The pink blob? Yeah. And this cyclone, it's whipping. It's whipping up into Oregon. And also up into Washington and dare I say up into Canada where we have a lot of new listeners. Free Candy, our co-host, lives up in Canada. And we don't know how crazy it is there. Hopefully, Bud, we hate to keep you on storm watch this long, but maybe you could give us some info on the storm. Would be great. Yeah, we'll check in with Free Candy later and maybe mm-hmm. he's got some some insight into this storm yeah. system and how to 
you know, uh, circumvent it, circum- and, circumnavigate it. Um, also, if anybody out there wants to keep up on the storm, we are going to be updating on social medias using the hashtag NHP Stormwatch. So go find that. Go search that. That's an idea I just came up with that maybe Free Candy could like record some videos of the storm in Canada, tag him with that. We'll yeah, I'm picturing he's just got like a big plastic poncho on and he's just standing out braving the storm mm-hmm. um, just to just to, you know, give us insight. Yeah. So um, maybe computer can give us some info. Computer, how do you survive a flood? According to WikiHow. The best way to survive a flood is to prepare an evacuation plan and pack an emergency kit filled with vital supplies ahead of time. When the water starts to rise and you're advised to evacuate, grab your emergency kit and head to higher ground. (coughs) Do not cross through water, especially moving water, if you can avoid it. If you do end up in the water, turn over on your back and keep your feet positioned upstream. Grab onto something like a strong branch or a roof, then point your feet downstream and yell for help until someone finds you. So if you get swept away in the flood, you want to lay on your back and, and mm-hmm. kind of shout. Yeah. And then everything will just kind of try to grab onto a branch. Everything will work out, hopefully. You know? Yeah, man. That's that's tough though. Um so we uh we hope that you guys uh you know make it through the storm. And for the ones that do, you should subscribe to our YouTube and we still are on the road to one K and we are picking up pace. All right, we got new subs. I forgot. I got to. Uh, I got to find these guys. Um, but uh, we have been working the system. We talked about it last week. How we were going to start doing like viral titles, clickbaity looking stuff. We put out a video that uh, that says, "Please don't watch this video," and the thumbnail just says "seriously," and we got you know a couple plays off of that, and. What all of the social medias want right now is short form reels that are like TikToks because we don't have to get into TikTok. Yeah, yeah. They're just trying to duplicate the success of TikTok. So basically the alleged success of TikTok. I don't know if any of those views are real. No, no. I think (laughs) um, I heard an interesting theory about TikTok that um, someone thinks that it's a, a giant psyop conducted by the chinese government to make americans stupid and yeah i mean there's actually a lot of well have you seen the difference between uh tiktok in china and tiktok in the u.s i don't even know do they have tiktok in china and are they allowed to have it yeah so they have it but this is all based off of just some youtube video that i watched so i didn't really fact check this but allegedly china has tiktok you are have to be like a certain age to use it like 13 that's probably reasonable and then you only get if you're underage you only get so much screen time on it like it has a built-in it'll only let it's you look at it responsible policy for like the an Chinese. hour a day and then um also it only gives like informational videos animal videos science videos like, if you're underage, you're only going to get, like, National Geographic type stuff. Now, maybe I know nothing about the Chinese government, but it seems like there's a lot of ideas that we could adapt from their society to ours that, that might be more responsible. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not, I don't know I'm not I would go that far. pushing, you know, um, like a, pro, a pro-communist a pro mindset here or anything. But, I feel like there's a but. Yeah, there it was. But, but. <laughs> you know, maybe... Um, Maybe some of the freedoms that Americans have are unnecessary and we just need to scale it, roll it back a yeah, couple, a couple some, notches, some like, you know, notches, I think you know? picking and choosing things like that would be, oh shit, we got a channel violation. <laughs> like, oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got some new subs here and these subs, let's see, we'll go see y'all. We got, I feel like we did. Didn't we do? Didn't we do Jacqueline Johnson and Rogerio Goulart? We oh yeah, but it's not Rogerio. giving us like the later. It, that, that I feel like that list is inaccurate because we yeah. keep like growing, but then it's, it's just these not. same names that show that, like they oh this they subscribed back in September. It's like no, well then who are the yeah these new ones? It's not keeping track of our subs for whatever reason. But okay, so now if you sub, you got to shout, you got to sound off sound off in the comments and be like hey i'm one of your new subs like well you know introduce yourself let us know where you're from um rep your hood and um yeah yeah um shout out to all the all our canadian fans out there that uh 
that yeah we had a couple of new canucks by that last chiming reel. in in the in the comments mm-hmm. and they seemed a little bit offended by our our um does canada have drugs bit and they're like yeah we have drugs see but this we is drugs, how eh? this is how you know that this guy was canadian because he said you guys need to educate yourselves and then he was like uh you know but he was reasonably p- polite, polite about it and yeah. then he said i I'll check in on you guys later. I think that you can make it. Like, I believe in you. Yeah, so we deeply you offended this guy, but he still liked us. And I feel yeah. like that's, that's you know, pretty on brand for, Classic for a sign Canadian. of a Canadian. Look at all the shit we talk Based about. Based on, Canadian. you know, the little information that we have. Have you ever actually met a real-life Canadian? Um, Like, in person? I I have to have I have to have right. I mean, do you think that like they're they exist? real? Do you think they're even real? Or do you think it's like a Santa Claus type situation where it's just like you know I'm forced into our brains from an early age that there's this Maybe. this this crazy place up north? But I mean, like, or it's like you've a, never been to Canada, no, right? I've, I've never been to Canada. Been to Canada. No. I've never met a Canadian. Mm-mm. You know, like we've got this this free candy guy. We've never actually met this guy in person. So no. I mean. You know, until it's right in front of you, until you can see it with your own two eyes. Like, I mean, I think it's not unreasonable to to doubt that. Yeah. I mean, it really could just be like a fringe type, like internet community where they're like creating this thing, this Canada. This like Canadian we've heard thing. about this lost city of Atlantis. Neither of us have been there. And I'm pretty sure I've that's never met fictional, anybody so, from Atlantis. I, mean, I could say that. Never. So I'm just saying until the you know the, they say the proof is in the pudding and we haven't had any. Wait, pudding. no, no, the proof is in the poutine, is what they say. Po- <laughs> I yeah. see what you uh-huh. did there. That was that was clever. Um. So yeah, we we really don't know. So, so if yeah, anybody get, out there can prove yeah, it. Yeah, if you're if you luck. are from Canada, um, please like provide some sort of uh, undisputable visual evidence or you know something for us to work with here because I mean, there's. You can't believe everything you see on the internet. Yeah. You just can't. You really can't. We, you know, the, the 2020 election cycle proved that. So um, we have been, we've been posting these shorts. We've been posting these reels. We've been getting a lot of traction in Canada. We've been getting a lot of traction off of things that we wouldn't think would get a lot of traction. Like, do they do drugs in Canada? War on Christmas was another one that blew up. Uh, one where you had a gun and you said, I'm going to shoot you in the face with this gun. That one got fucking thousands of views for whatever reason. So I feel like uh, a lot of your favorite content creators are scaling down their content to not offend the algorithm. Yeah, they're way. censoring themselves in, you know, saying... They're they're cutting out words that you know yeah. typically would have been just run to the mill words, not even curse words or anything like that. They're they're cutting out your. I mean, I can't say these words. Can I? <laughs> yeah, you can, because that's the point. Is that I think that we can fill that void where people are afraid to do these things that may trip the algorithm, but in our case, there the algorithm is favoring these things, and it's not. We're not like breaking any rules like we're not gonna like show nudity or do anything like that but like a gun like we could have a gun and we could just like i think having a gun in a video and a clip would be good hey, be careful with that thing man. no it's i have not loaded is it no my finger is not on the trigger so that means it's, it's safety on can't be loaded uh yeah okay. safety's on don't point that thing at me i won't so i think that this could probably just help because the algorithm seems to like stuff like this. So we could do something, you know, uh, maybe I could say, uh, if I could like have like a little funny line, you know what I mean? Like a funny bit. What if I pointed it at you? Uh, I think you should just put the gun down, man. All right. I think this is unnecessary. So yeah, that right there could be a clip. Boom. Done. Clip that. Hey, what if I, oh, yeah, well, you just put it down. All right. Sorry. Clip that, it's done. So, so yeah, we're just gonna start trimming the show down just to interchangeable sound bites, basically. Mm-hmm. So a lot of shows, you know, they they kind of let their show flow naturally. <clears throat> they have this conversation, they talk about these topics, and then they create the clips and the reels out of that later. Right. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to curate these moments. You're going to manufacture them? Yes. They're going to be a little clunky. They're going to be a little unnatural when you look at them out of their element. But, I mean, you think about, like, uh, think about the process of making a song versus the finished product of the song. 
like you could listen to it at any stage throughout and it would sound like garbage. But then when you see the finished product, it's good. So that's what the reel will be like. We're going to be creating these little chunks, these little reels, especially for our uh, our shorts and reels. So we're going to sacrifice the quality of the proper show yes. uh, for the sake of of creating these little yes. these little reels that we can yes, then post yes. on you know yes. the TikTok knockoffs. Because I would rather um you know reach 100 million people than with, with these little, you know, clickbait things, then do a phenomenal show for... Oh, yeah, absolutely. For, sure. what, 12? Yeah. 12 people? <laughs> so I think that we could just kind of run through a few things. Okay. I and like it. we could just kind of create these moments naturally. <clears throat> we could do like a whole, you know, and uh, action, talk into it, make it, sound like it just came up naturally in conversation. Got you. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. So um we enlisted a uh, chat GPT to give us some mind blowing facts that we could use. I think that this would just be perfect for a short reel. People will learn a little mind blowing thing. They'll share it. They'll comment on it. They'll do whatever, you know? <clears throat> so uh why don't we uh pick one of these out of here? Um I feel like these are not that interesting. Yeah, these ones kind of suck, right? Let's get some. And new also, ones. it's gonna take like two seconds to read these off. Like, what? How do we fill up? Because you you can't make a TikTok that's just like two seconds, right? Well, no, that's the thing. Because you make a TikTok that's like under seven seconds, and then you write a lot of stuff in the description, which will have G Chat GPT write a long description. So while people are reading the description, it's just playing over and over and over and over again. And you're farming views. You get 10 views for every one person that's looking at it. Oh, it'll play on a loop? Yeah, it plays on a loop in the background okay. when you read the description. Right. So what we want is little short. We just want to put out this info. Boom. And that's it. So what are some facts about, like, what's a, what's a topic that we could tell facts about? You asked me this off the air and I didn't have an answer. I know. Um, so that's why I'm trying to... <laughs> Facts about facts about facts about you said facts about life and it gave us like some weird things and then it kind of ran out halfway through and started giving us nose facts again. Uh, what about music? People like music. People enjoy music. We make music. Yeah. Okay. We've been known to make music, and um, should we be more specific? Like, um, because it's gonna you know give us like Elvis trivia or something like that if we don't if we don't specify like some some interesting facts about um <laughs> all right yeah that's a good idea come on chat GPT hurry up okay I said music and it's uh it's thinking. Is it thinking right now? I don't know what it's doing. Okay, well, chat GPT oh, here thinks... we go. Here are some interesting facts about music. Okay. Did you know that music's been around for thousands of years and is found in every known culture? What? Really? Every I, single one? I feel one? like that's kind of a gimme, though. Yeah. Um. All right, here we go. A uh, flute made a bone, all right. Uh, I heard that the oldest musical instrument is... Hold on. I heard that the oldest musical instrument is a flute made out of bone from like 43,000 years ago. Did you know that in some countries, music's actually a form <laughs> of torture because it can affect a person's emotions? Really? So they're going to play... I mean, oh, yeah. So they play like Katy Perry, California Girls for like 72 hours? I mean, that would be pretty torturous. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was a good one. I think that was a good little clip. Did you know that music is often used in film and television? Wait, hold on. Let's get that one from the top. Oh, okay. Um, did you know that in some countries, music's actually a form of torture because it can affect a person's emotions? Oh, yeah, okay. I could see that. Like if you listen to... Um, uh, Katy Perry, California Girls on like a loop for 72 hours. That sounds great. I would do that. I do do that. Computer play... Uh, California Girls by Katy Perry. Sure, California Girls by Katy Perry from Spotify. Computer, stop. That sounds pretty torturous. Okay, so that, yeah, that actually does once I heard it. Sounds bad. 
Okay, so that was good. I think that was a good reel. That was a solid reel right there. You think that's going to pop? I think that one could pop. We could hashtag it Katy Perry. We could hashtag it California Girls. We could hashtag it uh, um, China, like uh, Chinese water torture, because that's kind of what they were implying, right? What if we um, just did some pro-China propaganda and then posted that on TikTok? You think that would pop since, you know, it's a, a Chinese psyop? Some pro-China yeah, yeah. Ask yeah, Chat GPT some pro China propaganda. <sighs> uh, let's see. Some pro China facts. Uh while it's loading that, let's uh let's do this one. Many musicians are able to hear or create music in their head even when they're not actively listening or playing the music. It's known as perfect pitch. You know, Actually, a lot of musicians are able to play and create music in their head without even listening to music. It's called perfect pitch. Yeah, they can just hear it in their head and, and you know. I mean, yeah, right. Life. Did you know that actually like a lot of a huge percentage of people don't have like an inner dialogue? That's actually a more interesting fact that I don't know. Do you have an inner dialogue? Like, do you like kind of. Yeah, like kind of talk a little bit talk to yourself a little bit here and there. Sure, I, th- I, mean, yeah, I would figure everybody does. How how yeah. do you not have that at all? Well, apparently, uh, like some startling percentage of people don't. You think people are just lying about that though? They have to because it is like a really vague thing. Like I don't hear a voice in my head, but right. I do and talk. I, and, you know, people talking. are just saying that they don't have an inner dialogue because yeah, they they're picturing just it being as a voice in your head talking to you like like yeah. you're schizophrenic but so really, really it's just 40 percent of people don't understand the question yeah Got I, I think that's it um so let's see china's home to many species of animals that are felt nowhere else in the world these animals are exclusive to china really such Which as ones? the giant panda and the snub-nosed monkey oh wow that's pretty cool yeah i mean like giant pandas are very very cute and cuddly and like everybody looks pandas, right? So I think TikTok's gonna like that, especially China TikTok because they push a lot of animal stuff. Did you know that China's a major player in the international trade and that has made significant contributions to the global economy? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's fact, baby. I know. These are f- straight facts. <laughs> I just thought about. Did you know that China is the world's largest producer of rice, wheat, and potatoes? Not Idaho. You don't get your potatoes from Idaho. You get your potatoes from China, baby. Really? Yeah. Man, I just imagine like scrolling through like Instagram and just seeing a reel of like us on the podcast and you just saying like, "Did you know that China is the number one contributor to the world economy?" And I just, I, it's so funny to me for some reason. I don't know why. I like that. Um, did you know that uh, China actually is the home to a striving arts and culture scene? Very vibrant there. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a rich tradition of music. Very rich. Dance and visual arts. Let's not forget visual arts. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, absolutely. And the Chinese language, it's the oldest and most widely spoken language in the world. Not really? just in China, in the world. That's worldwide. Damn. That's crazy. China's got a lot going for it. That's mind blowing. And their government, you know, their government's, hey, it's well, a government, all right? Um, did you know that the world's largest market for music is actually the United States? Followed by Japan and then China. So China's top three? Yeah, that actually, China's like a lot bigger and more dense. Like a lot, well, I don't know about a lot bigger, but a lot more dense. Are they bigger? Than the United States? I think so. I saw this thing, uh, this Vsauce video about how the size of the continents are all like skewed on all of our maps for it to like fit and make sense and look right. But like Africa, for example, is like three times bigger than it is represented on a traditional like map or globe. It's huge. So you mean like the the country sizes on the the on, maps aren't sk- to scale? Yeah, they're not to scale, and it also like things get skewed when you get close to the poles because for them to take like a globe and then stretch it out into a flat thing, it like morphs everything, so things get like all fucked up. And for it to like, I guess, make sense visually, 
they had to sacrifice like the true scale of stuff. That's crazy. It's an interesting fact. And uh, like when you look at um, when you look at the Earth on like Google Earth, you could see fucking Africa just goes. Another all the thing way you up. can see from Google Earth: the Great Wall of China, the oh. Forbidden City, and the Terracotta Army. These are all famous Chinese landmarks that can only be found in China. <laughs> yeah, the Great Wall of China is probably only going to be found in China. But isn't it bordering something? No. Isn't it on the border of China and something else? The Great Wall of China? So wouldn't it technically know, also so. be in that country? I think it's just, I think it goes in through China. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. From like the Ming Dynasty or something? Something like that. This is like. <laughs> These are mind blowing facts. What wow. about. Um... Um, here, I want you to guess what is the most popular genre of music in the world? Chinese music. <laughs> yes, you're right, dude. You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh man. So I think we got I think we got a lot of reels out of that. We probably got a good five five solid reels out of that. I think so. At that least at least. Um so uh thank you for sitting through that. Uh with us. I know that it was, you know, a little bit painful, but it's all worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're we're sacrificing the greater good of the the proper show so we can get these reels out. Mm -hmm. and so now on to a topic that we would normally do on the show that we are excited about is the new public domain drop. Ooh, January first, a whole bunch of new works uh, entered the public domain, yeah. um, from film to music to um, well, that's pretty much it. Film, art? And music, art. I think yeah, art is in there. That's too. boring, right? Yeah, true. It's like how can we how can we use the art? Yeah, we can't really use show. a picture yeah, exactly. for something. But um, we uh, one of the main pillars of the show is intellectual property. Intellectual property and things after they're created, the IP gets copywritten and it lasts for I want to say it's seventy five years after the death of the creator. Yeah, every country is different, but um, the United States is what's the. We should uh, probably have this information already. Let's see. Uh, United States. Six. Let's find it. United States. Uh, I don't know. Countries with a life of 70 plus years. So life plus 70 years, which I think is the uh, the basis, like, the pre the average around right right places. after you die after x amount of years you know your intellectual property is no longer your intellectual property because you're dead and it moves into the public domain where anybody can use it for for their own purposes and every year you've got these new things entering the public domain which you can then you know take in and monetize and use for your your own purposes like um last year we had winnie the pooh as mm -hmm. we documented on the show yep, yep. and um this year there's uh Get the list pulled up here, but I know one interesting one is Sherlock Holmes. So we can now use Sherlock Holmes. On oh, the show. damn. Yeah. That can become a recurring character if we get, you know, like somebody to come in with like a pipe and uh, one of those hats. Uh -huh. I like that. We can we can start having Sherlock Holmes as a regular character, which is, I mean, not necessarily useful, but it's it's something we can technically do now. Also, uh, the original Superman, I heard. Oh, shit. Is Super entering the public okay. domain from uh, Metropolis this film from fucking whatever i guess had like the original okay so here's books boring movies we got metropolis wings the 1990s tv show with tony shalhoub no i think this is um uh like a 1930s movie oh gotcha which you know the wings with tony shalhoub would probably be a lot a lot more uh relevant to our purposes Oh, putting on the Ritz just entered the public domain. My Blue Heaven, the original My Blue Heaven, not the not the eighties um, reinterpretation with Rick Moranis and Steve Martin. Okay, I say. but um, I imagine it's similar. Um, best things in life are free. Okay, Sherlock Steamboat Holmes. Willie, Steamboat Willie's coming January first next year. Oh, what? So we're gonna be able to use Mickey Mouse on the show if if. Well, we're going to we, be able to see use fit. Steamboat Willie. It's different. I mean, it's is it? How, he how doesn't did... have white gloves on, which I think is like the main <sighs> signified yeah, difference. Yeah. But I mean, everything else is the same? Oh, he's got like a different a eyes? 
Yeah, he does have dead does eyes. Does he have to now? If we were to use Steamboat Willie, like, does he have to be operating a steamboat, or can we just have like you know Steamboat Willie doing other Mickey Mouse things? See, I think that if we were to have Mickey Mouse doing whatever, as long as there is like a like a like a helm for a steamboat, uh, like a wheel, whatever it's called, it's called a helm, right? I don't know. So, uh, hey, computer, what's the steering wheel of a ship called? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, it is common to refer to a ship's steering wheel as the helm. The helm? To be correct, there we the go. steering wheel used on boats computer. is called the boat wheel, and the ship's steering wheel name is the ship wheel. Okay, he just had to correct me for no reason. It's the helm, yeah. obviously. Then he was like, actually, it's called the ship wheel. It's constantly <laughs> trying to one-up us. So as long as we have a helm somewhere in the shot, then I think that we'll be safe, and we could just like say that he's obviously Steamboat Willie. Here's his helm. Boom. So what happens when a, when a work containing a character such as Sherlock Holmes, um, you know, enters the public domain for one work, but then like another Sherlock Holmes book is still copyrighted? How do you? Yeah, it's kind of like a gray area. I See, assume that's what. Um, I remember we talked about it when the Winnie the Winnie the Pooh thing happened. Was that Winnie the Pooh had entered the public domain from? the original book that was about Christopher Robin. So Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh were public domain, but like Piglet, Eeyore, uh, like him liking honey, like all of these things are still off limits because that didn't come until later. So, you know, it's saying um, under U.S. copyright law, anyone's free to use a character that has been developed in public domain works. Even if that character recurs in later works that are still under copyright, the rights only extend to the newly added material in those works, not the underlying material from the public domain works. Yeah. That the co- so like I just said, like... He, you can have Winnie the Pooh. He just can't be friends with Piglet because that was like an updated version of it. <coughs> so every element, that's weird. Every element of it has its own copyright time. So, you know, Superman, the original Superman is entering the copyright, but the Daily Bugle isn't, uh, you know, Lois Lane isn't. So so technically, like, you can make, like, merch. Like, next year we'll be able to put Steamboat Willie on a T-shirt and sell it, yeah. and Disney can't come for us. Yeah, yeah. Notoriously litigious Ooh, Disney. That would be fun, actually, yeah. to do that. He could be, like, um, we could make one, like, it's kind of like the Calvin and Hobbes thing where he's just pissing on, on various, <laughs> you know, other other things that are in the public domain. I don't know. Like, oh, yeah, he's pissing like on Winnie the Pooh. Uh-huh. We, can, we can totally do that. Fuck, we can do that. That would be completely legal. All right. Well, there it is. That's our new merch idea. So sign up for that. Sign up for our uh, mailing list to get the merch. And um, you can go to our website, naturalhabitatpodcast.com. You can go down to the sound off section at the bottom and write us a message there. We'll get your email address. We'll get your phone number. We'll get your data. We'll get your name. We'll get your family's name. We'll know everything about you, your likes and dislikes, all of your search history. I mean, Mm -hmm. really, it's just a... a mortifying amount of data it gives us about you. So, but it's nothing that you don't give to everybody else, right? And that know? that allows us to you know tailor uh, our content to uh, to your likes. Mm-hmm. So it's you know it's a win win for everybody. So make sure you uh, sound off. Make sure you give us your data, and um, stay safe from the storm out there. I'm taking the safety off. Hey, we'll see you next week.